Hey y'all and happy 2022. So I've been seeing a lot of things float around. Of course, tis the season of like how to have your best year ever, how to have the best 2022, because we know 2020 was very 2020, 2021 wasn't that much better. And now we're rolling into a new year. But I decided to go about things a little bit differently. It's easy to be super positive and, and all of that. And sometimes that can make any sort of change or anything like that a little bit unrelatable. So I'm going to go dark and I'm going to go negative. And I'm going to tell you how to have a sucky 2022 and then also ways that you can avoid it sucking. So I'm giving you the top 10 ways that I can think of, of how to have a horrible new year. Okay. Of course I have notes because there's a lot going on. All right. So number one, you try to change things without changing your mindset. This one is a huge one. We always hear that mindset is everything, right? And that is absolutely true because you can try to lose the weight, save the money, start the business. But if you continue to have just like these feelings of self-doubt creeping in, self-sabotage creeping in, and you don't really believe that you can in the first place, then you're not going to get very far at all. So you need to have the right mindset. You need to know that you can that you can in order to make things happen. So believe that you can, know your why, and oh my God, take action. And this is coming from a person where that last part can be a little bit more challenging, but let me tell you, take action. All right, number two, you tackle the things without a real plan. So I'm gonna go back with those typical um, examples. So you're starting a workout and you're thinking, I'm going to exercise every day. I'm just going to go to the gym. You don't really have a plan when you go to the gym. So you just go in there. You kind of rumble around a little bit. If you're going to the gym in these COVID times, that is. Maybe you hop on a treadmill. You walk for 30 minutes. Then you roam over to the weights area. And you do a couple of machines or maybe some bicep curls, whatever you can remember. And yeah, that is not a way if you want to lose weight. Just like if you want to change your eating habits, saying that you're gonna go no sugar, no carbs, no bread, no pasta, no soda, no happiness, no joy for 30 days. Because then my next thing is always, okay, so what happens on day 31? So you really need to come up with a program. If you are talking about weight loss and you want to do that by exercise, okay, how many days a week are you going to the gym? What are you going to do exactly when you go to the gym? Are you going to strength train? Are you going to use machines? How do you know? Do you know how to put together a total body workout? That sort of thing. If we're talking about food, then it's like, all right, do you know what day you're going to the grocery store? When are you meal planning? When are you meal prepping? How are you meal prepping? How are you even choosing the meals? Do you know what creates a actual healthy balanced meal and so on and so forth. So you need a nutrition plan. Finances, the same thing, right? You're just like, I want to save more money. How are you going to do that? So you have to have a plan and a program in order to be successful. And if you can't figure that out on your own, that's why you hire a coach for all of these things, for any of those things. And of course, you know, an amazing coach So if you want to know anything more about nutrition or just how to get your whole fitness and health life together, holler at your girl. Okay. Number three, you don't know how you got here. Anytime you want to create change, it's because you're not happy with where you are, okay? So if you don't take the time to know how you got to where you are in the first place, things will never really work. It's kind of like trying to get rid of weeds by just like snipping them at the stem. The weed is going to come back. It's not until you figure out, okay, where are the roots at? And then pull the weeds up by the roots and then treat that area that you get rid of weeds in the first place. And it's the same thing with anything that you have as a goal. If we are talking about weight loss, how did you get here in the first place to where you have excess weight? What was going on? Or if you've lost the weight before, then what happened to where you gained the weight back? If you want to save money, what's up with you not saving money in the first place? What happened to where you got here? Or if you're in debt, how did you get in debt? right? If you want to start a business, but you've been in corporate America forever, okay, well, what's been holding you back from starting that business? If you don't know the things that have kept you where you are, then that's going to have a really, you're going to have a really tough time achieving your goal, okay? So 
Number four, you have not released those and what, those things and those people who do not serve you, okay? Not everybody's on your team, all right? And when it comes to things, you can be easily occupied with life, right? So you can be occupied by stuff, okay? Well, I'm on X number of committees. I have all these volunteer things to do. Um, You could be occupied and need to let go of feelings of doubt, shame, guilt, um, self-loathing, self-hatred. There's a lot of that that comes in with whether it comes with weight, money, career stuff, where you just, you know, you gotta, you gotta really assess and let go of those things that are holding you back in the first place. Sometimes it may be your friends and your family. Again, not everybody's rooting for you. So if you have that toxic friend or family member, and yeah, I know that's a very like hot word to use, but if you already, if you have this person that whenever you're telling them and you're super excited about your goals, they find some way to just kind of knock you down what? You're not going to get out of debt. You know how much you love shopping. What you mean you're going to lose weight? Remember when you tried to do that before and that didn't work? Why are you going to try that again? You need to let that person go, or at least don't give them the goals that you're going after because they're just not that person for you. So release those things and those people that continue to hold you back. All right. Number five, you have still not chosen to put yourself first. Now this seems like a very selfish thing. And in some ways, maybe it is selfish. And being selfish is not necessarily a bad thing. We like to always think of selfish as then like, ha, 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 I'm just gonna hoard and I'm gonna greed and I'm not gonna do anything for anybody. But selfish is just really putting yourself first. And if, I mean, come on y'all, let's go back to the airplane analogy. Whenever you're on a plane and they're telling you like, look, if this thing goes down and stuff starts to fly south, before your child, you are supposed to put your mask on first. Because if you don't put your mask on first, you cannot help anybody else. So y'all, please put yourself first. And I know that's really hard for parents to hear or for people that have family to hear or, um, Heck, a lot of people have a hard time putting themselves first when it comes to your work. But if 2020 and 2021 has not shown us anything else, it should let you know that if you don't put yourself first, no one else will. Number six, there we go. Number six, you're waiting until fill in blank to be happy or to live. I cannot tell you the number of times I have heard folks say like, you know, when I lose this weight, I'll be so much more happy. I'll be so much more confident and I'm going to be happier. Y'all, it doesn't work like that. I have helped people lose the weight before and they are absolutely no happier unless we worked on that as well, especially in my early days. Now I kind of know how to bring everything together, mindset included. But like back in the early days, whenever all I knew was just like, okay, get this person to lose weight without addressing some of the other stuff, they'd lose weight. And then they'd be like, I thought my life was supposed to be better. No, you make your life better, right? You don't do, you do that as you're losing weight. It's not like weight loss magically makes things better. Just like making a whole bunch of money doesn't magically make you happy either. either. It just makes you more of whatever you are currently and whoever you are. So get happy now. Find ways to be confident now. You can travel now. You don't have to have a whole bunch of money for that. You can save money now, even if you aren't earning that much. Believe me, there's ways that you can cut things out. You can you can be more confident now, even as you're going through your weight loss journey. Don't wait. Life waits for no one. Again, reference 2020 and 2021. Like, do all of those things now as you're going towards where you want to be, all right? Number seven, Um, you don't even try. You refuse to even try. I've even heard recently some folks are just like, yeah, I'm not doing any goals, not doing any resolutions. And granted, resolutions I'm not a big fan of at all. Goals are something that's a little bit different. Goals are where there is not only what you're doing and a timeline behind it, but there's also a plan. And again, if we go all throughout, you know, everything else that I said before, that is also why sometimes people don't want to do this. So they don't even want to try anymore. 
And that is definitely a surefire way to have a sucky year because you aren't aspiring for anything. Like the goal is never to end up being the exact same person that you are right now. If January, whatever day it is, I think it's the second or third, I don't even know. But if I show up next year and I am pretty much the same with the same thoughts, the same stuff, like to me, and I understand this is not everybody, but to me, I failed. Because I always want to grow and to evolve in some form or fashion. It doesn't have to be anything drastic, but just like I want to continue to move forward and do something different and live a little differently. I haven't been home in almost three weeks. That's something I've always wanted, but never thought that I could do. But that was a goal. And so like there were small steps that went into that to make that a whole thing. So don't be afraid to try, right? We ha- people fail. We all fail, but you're supposed to fail up, if anything. So now you know, like, oh, that didn't work. Let me try this a little bit, uh, you know, let me try this a different way to try and create a different outcome. So don't just give up and just say, well, whatever happens, happens. Nah, like, like, take some steps, create a goal, even if it's just one or two. Create something and then go for it, all right? Number eight. <laughs> Number eight. You are choosing not to prioritize rest, water, sleep, which is different from rest, and stress relief, okay? You continue not to do that. Y'all, that is the quickest way to have a sucky year, okay? Because you end up running yourself into the ground. Rest is different than sleep. Rest is just sitting down somewhere, y'all, and just not doing something. Okay, rest is very important. That's where you can be self reflective. That's where you can plan for other things. That's where you can just be. Okay, like just even when you're, you know, a lot of people think that working out is where you get the results. No, the results actually happen when you rest, when you are, you know, active recovery, when you're not exercising. That's where the results actually happen. And then water. Folks don't drink enough water, y'all. You have no idea. Like that is almost kind of like a chemistry equation that helps fat loss and everything else to happen. Um, Sleep, we are not doing enough of that as well as stress relief. And stress is like the number one thing. That is the, that's the entry of everything bad right there okay like whether you're vaccinated once double vaccinated whether you have had a booster number one or booster number two if you are just running yourself ragged you're not drinking water your stress levels are through the roof and you are not eating well you are not helping yourself or your immune system as you know we we've I think it's been said already, like you can't cure a virus, right? And the vaccinations are supposed to be something that helps you. So you also have to help yourself in order to help it do what it's going to do the best if you choose to do it, okay? So get your immune system really where it needs to be, eating right, resting, moving, exercising, um, sleeping, and getting your stress levels in check, okay? Because Nothing else good comes from running yourself ragged. Nine. Nine is you continue to go after that quick fix. Y'all, those slim belly teas, um, freaking bands for your belly, uh, the shakes, the pills, the detoxes, those are all quick fixes. And all they do is prolong the amount of time before you have to do the work anyway. Okay, none of this is magic. I mean, one of the things that my clients will always say is just like, wow, this is so much easier than I thought because we have to tear apart and actually do the work. Yeah, you may lose 30 pounds in, I don't know, a month by doing these teas and then staying in the bathroom or being near a bathroom for most of the day. But then when you stop taking the tea, you stop doing the thing especially if it was a quick fix, it's all going to come back, y'all. It's going to come back. So just do the work. The work is so much more. You have to, you have to enjoy the journey. And I know that sounds really trite. And believe me, I am the queen of trying to find shortcut ways to make things happen. But if you're trying to lose weight fast, make money fast, um, 
heck, I don't know, um, start a business fast. It, it doesn't work that way. The only way that it's lasting is by doing the work. I have learned that. I am still learning that because I will still try and find a way to possibly shortcut. And again, it just prolongs doing the work where if you did the work the first time, you would already be there in the time that you're trying to figure out all these freaking quick fixes. So just do the work, okay? And then lastly, number 10, you don't have anybody to hold you accountable. It is so easy to just say that you're going to do all these things, keep it to yourself. And then when it doesn't happen, you just kind of like, ooh, glad I didn't let anybody know about that one, right? Because then no one's there to ask you like, hey girl, how's that whole business thing working for you? How's that money saving going? How's your weight loss program going? Because you don't want to have to answer to anyone. Believe me, I do accountability calls with my clients. Most of the time, Mondays are all accountability calls. I am just calling them to check in and see what has happened for you know the past time since we last spoke. And it's just getting some accountability. Hey, did you do this? No? Whoa, let's unpack that. Tell me more. Why didn't that happen? And sometimes it's not a comfortable conversation and they're not really thrilled, just like I wouldn't be thrilled either. If somebody was like, yo, you're supposed to do this. What happened with that? But what it does is then we can work on what didn't work in the first place so that it works better the following week. Anytime they are truthful with it, and goodness, my clients are amazing about that. They are truthful and they, and they tell me what's going on with them. We can fix it or we can come up with new ways to get around their obstacle so that next week they will be more successful. And it always works. And that is what a coach is for. That is what an accountability group is for. Which, by the way, if you are a woman and you are a busy woman and you are looking for some sustainable lasting weight loss solutions i have a free facebook group i'll drop it in the comments but definitely come join us because that's what i'm creating in there is just like a space for where we can hold each other accountable to our challenges to our goals and all of that so um yeah and then i would say um you know all of those are ways to have a really sucky 2022. So I'm going to go over them one by one. You are trying to do the things without changing your mindset. You're tackling things without a real plan. You decide not to research how you got here in the first place. You don't know how you got where you ever you are. You haven't released the people and the things that you no longer serve you. You decide to not put yourself first. You're choosing to wait until fill in blank until you are happy or to live your life. You won't even try. You won't prioritize rest, water, sleep, stress relief, eating well. You choose to go after the quick fix once again without doing the work and you have no one to hold you accountable. So if you want to have a sucky 2022, just keep doing all of those things. But I did give you some ways of how you can, if, if you can identify with any of those, with how you can get around that so that you can have one of your best years ever and do something a little different because time waits for no one. All right, y'all. I will see you next time. Stay healthy, my friends.